at the same time, there is some other sort of media news that I think is significant. I mean, Project Veritas, whatever you think of them, which I have a lot of mixed feelings about them. <laughs> They've been really important in terms of, um, you know, political sort of right leaning or right wing investigations. Um, they certainly have huge cultural impact. Um, anytime they drop one of their videos, it's major, major, uh, gets a lot of attention <laughs> on social media, uh, whether the, the mainstream news covers it or not. And James O'Keefe is the founder of Project Veritas. He has been their figurehead. He is really, he is this entity. Mm. And now... Uh, he is officially out. Uh, Charlie Kirk actually had the uh, kind of broke this news a little bit. He got a little bit of the inside scoop on the fact he was uh, stepping down or being forced out as CEO. Let's take a listen to a little bit, though, of what James himself had to say about it. A board member reached out to one of our journalists and stated, quote, you get a raise if there is a restructure without James O'Keefe at Project Veritas. I have a copy of the text message. And I'll give it to all of you. I redacted the name of the journalist. The board member deleted the message, but not before our journalist took screenshots. So I'm announcing to you all that today on President's Day, I'm packing up my personal belongings. I don't have the answers to why they've been doing this or why board members were going directly to employees to collect grievances. So you will recall, uh, we reported here and others covered as well that um, there were some rumors this may ultimately come to pass. There were some, a lot of which you get from this, that little snippet as well. A lot of internal grievances. Um, James O'Keefe, I think, comes off as a very difficult boss, uh, is probably <laughs> yeah. the diplomatic way to put it. Um, very difficult person to work for. Um, there were reports that, like, he was hungry and mad about it. He stole some, like, eight-month pregnant lady sandwich, things of that nature. A lot of accounts of him, you know, really uh, seeking to humiliate, publicly humiliate his staff members in front of other staffers. Um, some donors very displeased with some of his behavior and choices. And uh, one thing that caught our attention, and I think a lot of people's attention, let's go ahead and put this up on the screen, uh, apparently... They acknowledged, Project Veritas acknowledged improperly giving James O'Keefe $20,000 in excess benefits to pay for staff members to accompany him to Virginia as he performed a lead role in the production of the musical Oklahoma. <laughs> um, surprising one there. Uh, theater kid, <laughs> theater kid, <laughs> gone off the rails. And uh, uh, there were also some reports in the Daily Beast here that, you know, people were like, the donors think that this theater stuff is weird and a distraction, etc. So I don't know all the ins and outs of exactly what was going on there, but it seems like a lot of staff member drama. You know, I said at the top, I have mixed feelings about Project Veritas. I mean, I mostly think that they are, um, they have done themselves a disservice by, you know, they've gotten caught selectively editing things, mm -hmm. making people sa sound like they're saying totally the opposite of what they're saying. And the fact that they're a partisan outfit, that doesn't necessarily bother me because there are plenty of investigations of Democrats that deserve to be done or, you know, left ideas or thinkers or whatever, institutions, whatever. Like, that's all fine. I don't have an issue with that. But they really went above and beyond to sort of manipulate these videos to give the most negative impression and at times completely false and misleading impression. In instance, certain instances, they've had, you know, really impactful uh, revelations like Amy Robach on yes. Jeffrey Epstein and the fact that her news outlet like killed a story on it because they wanted to main access, maintain access to the royal family. Like that was very impactful. It was real journalism. But oftentimes they have gone too far in the direction of just outright manufacturing things and propaganda so that when they put something out, like you can't trust what they're ultimately revealing. So that's my gripe with them. I know I, I'm sure James O'Keefe is a difficult person to work with, but it is kind of an end of an era because he really is this organization. I think without him, I can't imagine that they amount to much. I'll ima I imagine that he will continue doing exactly what he was doing at Project Veritas, just, just in another a new organization. Right, different yeah. name, because to your point, it is him. Like James O'Keefe is Project Veritas. Yeah. And so wherever James O'Keefe goes, it'll be Project Veritas, but just with a different name and maybe a different board and different resources. But I think two things can be true. First, it can be absolutely true that he is 
uh, eccentric and very difficult to work for. And it can also be true that his board used that as an excuse to oust him. Mm -hmm. For some reason, we don't totally have a good idea about yet. Yeah. He has invoked the fact that this is all coming to pass right after the big Pfizer revelation uh, video. Do you remember the one uh -huh. where he was? Yeah. yeah. So he's, he's kind of invoked it. He said, this is our biggest Im investigation of all time. So it's not a coincidence that this is happening. This is all unfolding right now. Um, I want to I mean, bring up. Maybe. Maybe. Right. We don't know. <laughs> we don't know. Um, and I want to bring up a tweet, though, I thought was really interesting from uh, Ben Dominich, who said, James O'Keefe out at Project Veritas is yet another example of how right media and the donor class have a deep intolerance for creative genius. If Andrew Breitbart had lived, they'd have found a way to ditch him, too. Conservative media is awash with medium talent who pay their bills on forgettable churn that changes nothing and has a half-life measured in hours. Creatives rise up, make a lot of noise, get a lot of enemies, then get taken out by their own. Then donors turn to the mids. I think it's an interesting point um, because especially coming from somebody in sort of conservative media, there is, you know, the, the donor class is different. It's, it's not, you don't have any like Hollywood people in the conservative donor class. <laughs> you don't have many art, artistic people in the conservative donor class. And um, I don't think I would go so far as to say James O'Keefe is a creative genius, right. but I do think there is a different level of tolerance for um, that level of activism. And I, you know, I think journalism can be activism, but I think he leaned way more heavily on the side of activism than journalism. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, I, I buy that he's creative, you know, but- Just in Oklahoma. <laughs> uh, I guess, like I said, just to reiterate, I don't think that he did himself any favors by leaning so heavily in the direction of manipulation and propaganda, because he could have had a lot more impact with what he put out if they played it a little more straight and mm -hmm. didn't edit the videos deceptively and ultimately get caught. Um, and things of that nature, so that when you do put out something that is legit and real and deserves news coverage, it becomes very easy for everyone to dismiss it as just more James O'Keefe Project Veritas propaganda. And I feel the same way. I mean, on the Pfizer video, I was very reluctant to cover that because I don't know. I don't know who this dude is that they interviewed. I don't know how they edited it. I don't know what that, like, given his track record, yeah. it makes me very, very wary of trusting what they're ultimately putting out to the public. And, you know, I'm someone who is very open to, you mm -hmm. know, uncomfortable conversations, uh, exposing companies like Pfizer. Like, I have no issue with any of that. We try to do that here all the time. But when you've made proven yourself to be so untrustworthy so many times, it gives your ideological adversaries very easy grounds to just dismiss out of hand everything you ultimately put out. Well, and the Pfizer investigation is also a really good example of that. In the same way O'Keefe sees it as, a, as an example of sort of the pinnacle of Project Veritas's work, it's also a great example of how easy it was for the media completely to dismiss it um, and not cover it. And if they did cover it, only cover it to the extent that they're almost like mocking O'Keefe and criticizing O'Keefe. And there is a different world in which that investigation happens and has more credibility because James O'Keefe, you know, in the 13 years since he founded Project Veritas, all the way back in the Obama years, 2010, mm -hmm. um, you know, was putting, he, he, they do sometimes dump the raw footage out, um, but not all the time. And we have seen that go wrong in the past. And so there is a world in which they're doing these investigations, just dumping raw video out and everyone can sort of judge for themselves. Um, and they get Pfizer in an impossible situation where they can't wriggle out of uh, the media coverage because other people take it and run with it. But that's not the world that uh, we live in. And yeah. it's not the world James O'Keefe created. Yeah, absolutely. Hey guys, ready or not, 2024 is fully upon us now. And Sagar and I have been brainstorming ways that we can really up our game for this critical election. Yeah, we rely on our premium subs to expand our coverage, to add staff, to upgrade the studio. We just want to give you the best independent coverage of this election, which is possible. So if you can help us out, become a premium subscriber today, breakingpoints.com, or the link is down here in the description video. It really means the world to us. And if you like what we're all about, this is the best possible way to keep us 100% independent, working only for you.